Hey guys, what's up? Sampo here. Today I'm gonna tell you the most broken support hero in the game right now. I need a warlock. I don't know why people don't pick this in my bracket. I always have to suggest them to pick this hero. But when I'm playing support, I always pick it over witch doctor also. So in this video, I'm gonna explain you the skill build of warlock, how to play in the lane, what items to buy. In. So let's get started with this. The skill build is very simple on this hero. It is maxing your first and your third skill and not taking any points in your hit. So if you play against highly mobile heroes in the lane, then maxing your first is the most ideal in the lane but if you are not playing against highly mobile heroes like they don't have any blink or anything that gets them away from your upheaval then max your upheaval but if you are playing against heroes like next assassin or silencer in the lane then don't take points in the upheaval okay take only one point just to have that skill in the lane take your points in the shadow ward so you can heal your teammates and outdo the damage that next assassin does in the lane so at level 5 try to max your upheaval so you can have it at level 3 because at level 3 it does like 60% slow after 3 seconds which is quite a lot okay, which makes the enemies like highly immobile in the lane so the enemies get kited and they get killed now for the full skill build I don't usually take shadow ward until it's level 10 that time only I take the shadow ward and then level 10 talent you can take the upheaval radius because it is super broken the radius makes it so big the enemies can't literally move in the team fights and in level 15 talent you take the plus 12 attack speed per second from upheaval so with solo crash you can give your carry or you can give your heroes with like 130 attack speed which is crazy you know 130 attack speed from this hero 70 from the upheaval and the 60 from the solar press and at level 10 talent you take the golem on death so if enemies get on top of you and kill you they are stunned and you get a free golem which allows you to push waves and do some damage in the team fights so you can be very useful even after death so at level 25 talent take the 20 armor or you take the magic ration depending upon the enemy team they have high physical damage then you take the 20 armor and if they have high magic damage then you take the 80% magic resistance for golem okay the item build is very straightforward for this hero my ideal item build for this hero is i start with the basilus in the lane with one sentry and a tango the reason for basilus because this hero has very low mana region and you can also buff your carry in the lane or your offlaner in the lane with the basilus so they can spam a lot because one mana region is very good enough in the lane for you to spam the skills and then the sentry is unblock small camp now a lot of times enemy is gonna block this small camp so you don't get the pull so you buy the sentry to unblock the small camp now the reason why i don't block the hard camp because when i use my fatal bonds on the crypts it generally pushes the lane so you need to pull the crypts back so you can keep the lane equilibrium so that's the reason why i don't block the hard camp and i always pull the hard camp so i keep the lane equilibrium in the lane now i highly recommend you if you are not an expert in pulling then just block the hard camp okay it is highly advisable to block the hard camp you don't know to pull i'm very expert in this so i don't block the hard camp and i always get the pull on the hard camp so do this at your own risk now so once you get this basic items you can go for arcane boots because you need a lot of mana on this hero and you can always recharge your teammates also with the mana at 15 minutes you save the gold for 1400 for the shard with shard you can do like 1000 damage in team fight with just your upheaval because it is so super broken so those mini golems do like 180 damage per hit so you summon with your fatal bonds you summon six of them it's very good at fighting in the early game because this hero otherwise doesn't do much damage in the team fight without the ultimate so they added a nice change there so without your ultimate also now you're very useful with the shard now if you are countered with next or a silencer then don't buy the shard because you're not gonna have the full channel of it or you're not gonna even have channel okay in my bracket these next assassin players they just cancel my upheaval they just run into my upheaval and they use the spike carabis and cancel it same with the silencer they just press one button with the removal and they stop my upheaval if the enemy team has silencer or next assassin then don't buy the shard you can go solo crest guardian grievances glimmer cape four staff or any other support item like you can go pevis you can even go hex if your team is lacking a stun like this hero doesn't need much items and you don't need any strength gain items also in this hero to make this hero tanky so it has three strength gain in some games i have even rushed shiva's guard because the enemy team had too many heals and my teammates are not making so i just rushed shiva's guard as a fire or a four warlock and we won the game so you have a lot of flexible item choices if you are countered in, with this hero but getting the shard is really fast if you are not countered okay with the shard you can chop the waves you have both the spells the first and the third it clears waves so you can actually farm waves with this hero yeah, you can farm ancient stacks also with this hero you can farm five six ancient stacks with this hero because because the mini column they do a lot of damage now how to play this hero in the lane so the way to play this hero in the lane is you skill your first fatal bond and then use it on the crypts along with the enemy heroes so the maximum benefits come when you hit the six units two 
heroes and four crypts we can get the maximum benefit but it's okay to use it on five units also that is one hero and four crypts make sure to prioritize the enemy offlane or the enemy carry the enemy is supposed to buy a lot of region so this way their net worth goes down and you get added advantage and if they don't buy region then you can look to punish them when they are half hp with your upheaval and the fatal bonds now this hero naturally pushes wave with fatal bond so you can unblock the hard cam or if you didn't block the hard cam you can pull the hard cam with the crypts so you can get the lane equilibrium in the lane so in the lane it is very simple use your fatal bond and then use your upheaval the enemies are immobile that is they don't have blink blink spells they are stuck in the lane and they take a lot of damage this will make them low and after the next 35 seconds that is after using your upheaval which is the cooldown of upheaval you can actually go on the enemies and kill them if they don't buy region this is how you punish them in the lane now the hero is very easy to kill in the laning stage when you're maxing the first and the third skill so try to be careful with the position in the lane don't over extend stay behind the creep that is where you stay and try not to get sandwiched in between two heroes when you're trying to harass the off lane or you're trying to harass the support so this hero is very squishy it's very easy to kill so if you're out of position you're gonna get killed in the lane but most of the time it's gonna be a good lane for you because this hero's first skill is very broken in the lane it does a lot of damage and it's very annoying it's like the gyro of the flag cannon or uh, you can't do anything to the hero the only way to stop fatal bonds damage mini golem is to deny the crypts make sure the enemy doesn't deny the crypts so that's how you play this hero in the lane you use the fatal bond on the crypts with the heroes you do a lot of damage then you pull you reset then you again do the same thing so in the mid game that is in the team fight so you always start with the fatal bonds then you use the golem then you use the up well now in some cases when your carry actually needs the golem then try to use the golem as soon as possible instead of waiting for the fatal bonds to be hit then you can use a fatal bond and then you can use a after -will. so depending upon how much time you have in the team fights you can either use your golem first or you can use a fatal bond if you're seeing a good five man fatal bond then please make sure to use the five man fatal bond and then use the golem this way you can do maximum damage and then use a after -will. so i think that's it for this video guys so thank you guys for watching see you guys in the next video take care thanks for watching bye